Hello everyone. One of the most famous figures in neuroscience, biology, and psychology is Phineas Gage. His story gave researchers insight into how cognitive functions are localized in various areas of the brain. That is, that different parts of the brain control different parts of our behavior. It all started in Vermont on September 13, 1848, when Phineas Gage, a railroad foreman, was in the process of blasting some rock during railroad construction. In order to do this, he drilled a hole and filled it with gunpowder. Typically, the next step in this process would be to put some sand in the hole so the gunpowder blasts the rock safely when you slam the iron rod in it. However, for unknown reasons, Phineas did not complete that step, and a spark from the iron rod hitting the bottom of the hole ignited the gunpowder. This launched the rod into his skull from under his cheekbone, behind his eye, out the top of his head. This damaged his left frontal lobe and knocked him off his feet. Surprisingly, Phineas never lost consciousness and actually walked to a carriage that proceeded to take him to the hospital. For the entire mile-long journey, Phineas was completely conscious, talking, and even sat upright. When he arrived at the hospital, he famously said to John Harlow, the doctor who saw him, here's business enough for you, and he wasn't joking. Basically, with the amount of destruction in his head, it's miraculous Phineas didn't die. Gage did get an infection a few days after he arrived at the hospital, which led him to fall into a coma. He also lost all vision in his left eye. Several weeks later, though, he returned to his home and brought the iron rod with him. When he returned back to work, his friends noted that he was no longer Gage. Whereas before he was calm, smart, and professional, Gage was now moody, profane, violent, and uncontrollable. Due to this change in behavior, Gage lost his job as a railroad foreman. Not much is known about Gage's work whereabouts after this point, but there are stories that he displayed himself, his head, and the rod all across Northeast America. He was like a traveling show. In 1852, he traveled to Chile where he found work driving coaches during the country's gold rush. Some researchers believe that the fact that he found a job driving coaches meant that his brain healed in some way given how cognitively demanding stagecoach driving is. He would have had to take care of the horses, collect fare, steer in the right direction on crowded streets, and so on. This is a lot to ask from a man who was previously described as uncontrollable and violent. In support of this claim, one doctor who lived in Chile noted that Gage was in the enjoyment of good health, with no impairment whatever of his mental faculties. While Phineas almost certainly did not recover completely, one can assume based on the complexity of his job that he made meaningful progress in his cognitive functioning. Eventually, however, Gage's health declined and he traveled to San Francisco to be closer to his family in 1859. One year later, he died of a seizure. Phineas Gage's story is important for numerous reasons. First, some people say it was the birth of neuroscience. Since Phineas survived the iron rod going through his cranium and piercing his frontal lobe, it gave researchers insight into how different parts of the brain control different functions of the mind. For example, Phineas's frontal lobe was damaged, but he was still human. He could still do all the things he could do before, but his decision-making skills and personality changed. Researchers could then deduce the types of cognitive processes that occur in the frontal lobe from that information. Second, it shows the importance of these case studies in neuroscience and psychology. Since it is very unethical to pick at someone's brain, let alone damage it, researchers find these types of accidents helpful in investigating how the brain works. Lastly, it shows us the need to produce accurate data. There is surprisingly little left about the specifics of Phineas's behavior before his injury, and it is unclear exactly if his personality changed all that much. Furthermore, more data would have been useful in analyzing Gage's condition as years passed to further investigate the theory that his brain healed. Due to the vagueness of the data surrounding Phineas, his tale is often embellished or oversimplified. Overall, the story of Phineas Gage is very important in cognitive science, and I thought it would be great to share with you all. Obviously, I couldn't cover all the details, so, like always, I have my sources down in the description if you want to read more about Mr. Gage. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.